We have a day full of surrenders today. We have dogs, cats, and two horses. Um, pretty much the whole day is full and we're super excited to see everything that comes in. We just got two horse surrenders in. Um, we put them up in stalls over here and when Dr. Nancy gets in on Wednesday, which is in two days from now, we'll make sure that we do a full vet evaluation. They'll be fed and watered and happy in the barn. Oh, gosh. Look at it. it is definitely kitten season. We've had a lot of cats coming in right now. We have a mama with five newborn kittens. They're really tiny and we're really thankful that we have a mom with the kittens because kittens without the mom like this, it's really hard. So today is Monday morning and ah, I feel so great after. You're too wide awake for a Monday morning. Yeah, so. uh, no, this is just because I, if I don't get enough sleep, I go crazy. Uh, I made something that whoever passes his door has to do a dance, but it was for myself, and now I actually uh, make sure that I apply for everyone. As you can see right here, ta-ta! Okay, see? so you so, have to demonstrate. Exactly, so you have to demonstrate. So for example, like, you can go like, you know, like that, or like, you can go, you know, yeah, and you can go like that too. Why do we start doing this? You know, so to keep us energetic, you know, because it's Monday morning, and sometimes we just, all we want to do is just want to go in the chair, Take a big chunk, go, and go. Okay. What do you think of the sign? Will you be dancing now? No. <laughs> but I like the sign a lot and the effort, and I really hope that most people actually see the sign and do it. Aaron, do you want to go through the mirror for a second? I just took Peanut and Jack to get rabies shots for their um, adoption appointment. And I just happened to get back just in time. I'm gonna wait for Caitlin to get Jack. <laughs> we can go right in the office. This is Peanut. Very, very sweet once you get them. Hello. He's like, I'm not too sure about this. Come but on, once, once you can, they're just so scared and just need. They need someone to love and build trust with them. That's all. This is one I want. Yeah. Is this the one? I thought so. So yay, I got a forever family. Yay. <gasps> I haven't had one this little and I had a full grown dachshund and she passed away and my house is too empty. I, I gotta have something to love, you know? And my kids are gone, they won't let me love them. You can go home with me. Yes, I want to adopt Peanut. We have all of our animals right here on our Looking for Love wall. Uh -huh. When you adopt an animal, you get to put your animal on the front of the So, we made it to the other wall. We made it to the other wall. Looky here. Who is that? Is that you? You're on that wall. Say yay, you're on the wall. My name is Cheryl, and I am here to adopt a fur baby. And this is Peanut. He's gonna go home with me to give him a loving home and spoil him rotten and just let him be king of the castle. Caitlin answered all my questions yesterday on the phone and gave me a lot of reassurance and everything went just exactly like she told me it would. It 
Today is the first of the month, which means that Bruno and Blue Jeans need to move down to a different pasture. Um, we rotate them between all the different pastures because they eat different things than the horses do, and so it helps to like keep the weeds down, and I think they also eat certain bugs. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but... Um, but yeah, they're moving down to a different pasture, so we're going to go attempt to move them without getting gored by mini steers. I'm pretty much, well, I'm not really done. Haley decided to take over my computer and, and so I decided to help someone in need in the meantime, because I didn't want to just stand there and do nothing, you know? I'm getting paid, so I have to do the work. Right, Kimberly? No, I'm literally the only outside person here right now. That's why he's helping me. Like, Keith is gone, Corey's gone, Dr. Nancy's gone. Like, literally anyone who could help me is gone. Yeah, that's So, it. media team is who's here, and that's who's helping me. <laughs> go for the gate. Good. Go for the gate. The donkey went for the gate. Bye, Mule. Go on. Don't get mad, just leave. Good steer. That's fine, it's one Mule and we can put him back. Yeah, we can get him back. That yeah, I know. Ha, huh? see, I'm an expert. The challenge, yeah, but he's gonna try to squeeze out that spot. And if Tyson comes back this way, we'll try to let him back in. So now what? Well, I'm gonna go try to open that gate without getting gored. No! Dang it! Oh, Well, perfect. that's the correct spot for you. You're the only one who went where you were supposed to. I knew he was gonna try to do that. Just walk down there towards him. He's gonna wanna come back this way because he wants to be with Bruno. And just run him this way. John, you have to go all the way down there now. You ran him the wrong direction. He's like, he's thinking that Blue Jeans is gonna gore him. He got scared because I told him, you have to try not to get gored by the mini steer. But he's not the mean one. It's Bruno who's the mean one. Like when Bruno gets mad, he'll flip Blue Jeans. What? Yeah, you've never seen it? Yeah, well, I did because we, like a few months ago, we pulled them in to do their routine run, vaccinations. Run, Blue Jeans, run! Cause like our neighbors have cattle over the fence, like over that Come way. Come on, get back! Good Come job, on. John. <laughs> Here he comes. Come on. Ah. Stay in there, Bruno. Keep going, keep going. Here, let me stand to the side. Keep, keep going. Keep going. There you go. Good hey. steer. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we pulled them into the training barn to do their routine vaccinations, and we'll just say they don't like needles because Bruno broke out of the chute. Like, he literally broke the chute. And Blue Jeans tried, but he's too small. Once you get horses mixed up, it's such a pain to get them back to where they belong. How do you even put them in the right place? Run them back down here, and I'll let them in one at a time. Uh. I mean, the girls are gonna try to stay together. They haven't accepted him yet. Nope. We did it. We got um, Bruno and Blue Jeans where they belong. And this mule, which I forgot his name. Tyson. Oh, Tyson. And it took us a while, but we did. We're going to be uh, working on Benjamin, and he has a little pocket deep inside of his neck. Like, it's healed up really, really well with Dr. Nancy's treatments, but there may be an underlying issue why that little pocket's not healing. So we're gonna be x-raying it, and then Dr. Nancy has some plans to help it heal. Hello, baby doll. 
Hey, sweetie. Hey, how's my man? He's like, I've not had my treats this morning, woman. He goes, you didn't give me treats and you didn't let me wander around. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. Can I be nosy, lady? See if you've dropped yet. Oop, I can feel the touch of one. Touch of two, so a few more months and you can get castrated, darling. Can we learn to pick up our feet? Can I have this foot, please? <gasps> Thank you. He's like, but I want to eat it. <laughs> you have to lick it. <laughs> I know, this is the slowly to capture your attention. Okay, so our chip is right there. Where we're focused at is where the drainage is in here, so. Okay, darling, let's see if we can get a drain in there and get that to finally seal in. And his body may be reacting where the microchip migrated. We may end up having to take it out. We knew initially that his extra, or that his microchip had migrated because it was scanning further down than it should be. What I'm going to do today is to put a drain in on the back end to let that drainage come out, then let the open wound finish healing in. That way, it's not constantly draining out it. But that's what we're after today is to stop the drainage, make certain there's not an infection that we need to treat differently with the culture. I'll pull the CBC chemistry, check his blood levels, and then we're going to at least put in a second a drain and we may potentially pull the microchip if it's easily to get out of the tissue. Yeah, and that's scar tissue. You can tell the way it's bloating up there. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Okay, darling. Let's give that a few minutes to get numb. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little stab incision in, put in a little piece of IV line essentially for tubing for a drainage. And that way, hopefully to get it to drain out of it where this will seal over and this can go ahead and finish in. So, but yeah, there's where all of the infection has always kind of been the source in there. So that's why microchip is down here now. So I'm going to leave microchip alone today. It migrated from where it should have been up here in the ligament. I'm improvising out of a um, eye lavage kit. So that's when I'm formulating which way I want to go about it. So it's kind of one of those, uh, we're going to make, we're going to make what we need. Got you two in there. I want to get you, I know he's not had exceed while I've been gone. There's nothing really good to culture. So what we will do, darling, is we'll do your topical treatment, your cornstarch, give you some exceed, and we'll see what you do. It's really great to see little Benjamin doing so good. Um, I was really, really concerned about him. I thought we were gonna lose him. And at one point he, he was so bad off, we almost had to euthanize him, but we kept trying because we saw a glimmer of life in him that he wanted to keep trying. And so far it's been a journey, but he is, he's doing really good. So, um, you know, there's always a little bit of worry always with an animal that something could happen, but it's, it's good seeing him at this point and like he's been healing so well and hopefully with uh, what Dr. Nancy has done, it will completely heal up and he can get adopted. Oh, baby. Oh, 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 you're okay, I know. Dr. Nancy's coming with cookies. She got the cookies. I found the good ones. The one that Benjamin prefers, not that the other ones aren't good. Benjamin just has a preference. Okay, slightly spooled baby. I know you still won't eat out of my hand, but look what we have. Oh, he's like, I'm hungry enough, I will. There you go, you're still a little drunk. Yeah, that's the first time he's ever taken one out of my hand. Usually he's like, I can't do it. Yeah. It's below me to take it from your hand. 
So today we x-rayed, um, we've done blood work to see where he's at on his anemia, things like that. Uh, we x-rayed to see if there was anything in there that could be a nidus for that infection. The microchip we knew had migrated. It is actually down below where the drainage is coming from, so I do not think that it's related to it at this time. It may have been part of the factor behind it to start with, but I don't think the microchip is the reason why he's still doing that little bit of drainage. So what I did is I went in and put two drains in to give that an outlet path so that way the actual where it blew out originally can seal in and heal over that way. So we'll see how that does. Uh, there wasn't actually enough drainage this morning to culture, which is a good thing. So we may just be finishing up the tail end. Uh, I know he'd only been on Uniprim while I've been gone, so I went back to some Exceed just to see if we needed that little bit of extra to knock it down. So we'll see what his blood work says. We'll see how the drainage goes with the drains there to give it an outlet to go out where it's draining from, not making that tract forward to come out that way. And then we'll keep an eye on the microchip long term. If I still think that it might be an issue, then I can always go in and we can take out the microchip. So, but where it's lower than the drainage today, I don't think it is the reason for the drainage. So today I'll leave it, but we will definitely monitor and keep up with it. It's volunteer day and the volunteers are cleaning up for us here and we, when we get all of our cleaning done then we'll have some horses that they can groom. So after we get everything all scrubbed and cleaned we rescue everything with rescue, let it sit and then we rinse it out then after it all dries we put it all away. So they're going to rescue everything when they're done washing it off. You guys want to pet him real quick? Yeah. Alright, so don't pet where his injury is, but you can pet him everywhere else. He just had a treatment done. Volunteers are done cleaning and I'm gonna go get Cowboy. Hey Cowboy! Are you ready to go get some love? If you guys want to come on over, you grab a and then we have a limited amount. I want the little pick to pick the horse thing out. The hook pick? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I feel what I thought last time. Yeah, remember you guys put this together or organized it for me? My day was so far pretty good and my favorite part I think was cleaning the pony and also my favorite part was seeing the donkey. We saw um, a donkey over there and it was pretty cool and we took a picture by it. It's pretty cool. I think it was um, the clean cowboy. I think that was my favorite part. Well, we swept out the barns and we cleaned some buckets and we had pony time and we got to groom and um, wash a pony cowboy and it was great. We had so much fun. I'm so glad that there's places where rescues can go to find relief and shelter and everything. Volunteer day went really well. Uh, they are amazing help. They cleaned up our pile of things that needed cleaned. They got to groom Cowboy and give him a bath. And um, they got to have some fun and uh, take some photos over in our photo booth. So it was a great day. So glad to have our volunteers. So today we have a working interview out here for a trading position. 
Uh, this person you guys have already met, she came out and adopted Nadia. When she was out here kind of working Nadia, I kind of, I really liked her approach that she took. Um, it's kind of the approach I've been looking for in somebody to come out and help me with training these horses. We have very similar ways of working and I think it'll be really beneficial for all the horses. So let's go see what she's got. Uh, we are starting with Star. This is one that he has some buddy sourness issues and can be a little bit pushy at times, but he is uh, broke to ride. He's actually extremely well trained under saddle. He just has the issues on the ground. I'm showing him everything, letting him check it out. The saddle pad, he acted like he didn't want it first. So I just kind of showed it to him until he kind of just let me get up to him with it. I'm not gonna force equipment on him. So I'm doing the same thing with the saddle, letting him check it out, cause he seems interested. And I like to work off of their curiosity. So we'll see if it worked. He's thinking, we're gonna show him one more time. Cause I like him to accept it. I don't wanna force him into work as long as they're not being rude about it. All right, let's see if I can swing this one up. That is a stout saddle. Whew, it's been a while since I've picked one up that heavy. I've gotten used to kid saddles because I've been lifting up kid saddles. Yeah, doing all the lessons, it's only kids. So we pulled Star out just so that we could kind of do a little bit of groundwork with him. I could jump in the saddle and kind of evaluate where I'm at and see where he was at today. Um, and that went really well. So yeah, I think it's so. exciting. Midwest is here supplying us lunch today and going to do us a demonstration. Because <laughs> y'all deserve it. What's going on here? We get lunch. Where's the lunch? Over here. Why? Oh, can I have it? There's not enough. No, not for, there's not enough for Chunko. I'm sorry. Yes, to start. He d he has enough. Um, Chunko reserves. doesn't need any more food. Uh, no, he needs more. He has he needs enough to grow bigger. reserves. Uh, no, this is this is not his. His uh, face. Yeah. Um. I don't even know if he could fit anything else in there. Uh, I think he's so fat that it has closed his mouth up. Well, here's the thing. He wants to do beat the record of being the biggest chicken there is. So I think he beat that a while ago, John. I'm sorry. He still has a, a more room to go. Might be time to think about a diet. <laughs> a I think you're right. He needs a diet. Yeah, that chicken's fat. <laughs> you thought you were ready to eat? Oh, it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> we have a treat today. We actually have lunch provided for our staff. Yes, I'm Ashley Hendricks with Betta Keenall, and we are happy to be here and bring Horse Plus uh, lunch today. We actually have a new medical uh, piece of equipment that she's going to be teaching us how to use, but we get to eat first and then we'll go check out the new equipment. We are bringing Benjamin out for demo. Benjamin is used to free roaming with me, so he's like, why are we putting the halter on, lady? He goes, we free roam. But we have to have the halter on right now, Benjamin, honey. So we're gonna use Fovia, which is fluorescent light therapy that cuts the healing process time in half, so it helps things heal at a faster pace so it multiplies cell growth and tissue. Horse Plus brought one of these and so we wanted to come out and do a demonstration as well as bring them lunch in appreciation of them buying this um, awesome product. So we're going to demonstrate it right now and um, show y'all how easy it is to use and um, how it works. 
you'll have five treatments per box, okay? And you'll get one jar out, which is just carrier gel. And then you'll get one pipette out of this bag, which are your chromophores, okay? And this is what you pour in the gel to activate the light. So one doesn't work without the other. And this won't stain your skin or clothes, but it'll be orange color. And then you will use a tongue depressor. You can also use just a glove with your fingers. Um, I found that that's kind of better and easier with ways that we, um, if we're treating something that's kind of sensitive. So we start up like so. And we don't want to leave this out with the lid off because now that the orange is in there, it's light sensitive. So we just want to make sure when we're when we're done using it, that we put the lid on it and put it in the fridge because it lasts for seven days. And you're just gonna put it on the area that we're treating. So it doesn't have to be a, a thick layer or dripping off or anything like that, just the area that we're treating. And you always wanna get the outer layers as well because the lamp will grab some of that good tissue and cells that are around there and help them multiply and regrow. So we don't wanna stick this back in this, okay? We do wanna wear our protective eyewear as well as if we're doing it on an animal that's close to their face. We do wanna protect their eyes as well because it is UV. Um, so I'll have you put those on. I mean, they are, they're really cool. I know y'all get y'all as many pairs as y'all want. Okay, so this is the lamp. This is not harmful. You cannot burn them with this. Um, it's just, it's a warm, it's a warm lamp basically is what it feels like. So there's a button right here that you push and then it's gonna light up right here and it's gonna count down two minutes and it automatically turns off. Um, you don't have to move it around or anything crazy like that as well. You just wanna kinda hold it still. So you just click the button and you just hold it as close to the skin as possible. Okay, so it turned off on its own. Now, always one treatment is, we call it a back-to-back -back treatment. So we always wanna do this twice, okay? So in between treatments, we wanna wipe this off with like a saline soak swab. We're gonna use our other end of our tongue depressor or a different finger if you have a glove on. And as you can see, he's not, I mean, this doesn't burn. This feels, it feels good to him after because with the fluorescent light therapy, it actually takes the inflammation away. Yep, and then you're done. So then you wipe it off and Recheck seven to 10 days, like it is that easy. Just like that. I'm really excited about this uh, new light to add to all our medical equipment that we have here. I'm really curious about how it's gonna do with rain rot. We get a lot of rain in Tennessee and we get a lot of horses suffering with that. So what did you think, Dr. Nancy? I think it's worth a try because Benjamin's done really well. We're down to that last little bit. And again, we have Harvest to try it on her spot of proud flesh where the skin can't pull in because of the tension. I was gonna do skin uh, hair plug transplants, but we're gonna try this first. Lots of things to try it on. And I'd heard good reviews about it online on one of the Facebook groups already for vets. So when Tony mentioned it, I'm like, actually it just came up over the past weekend where I saw that and I'm like, I know what you're talking about. So we'll give it a try and see how it does. Hopefully a week from now, Benjamin will be uh, way better. This little dog named Booger is going to a home in Texas. Booger came to us as part of kind of like a hoarding case and um, we're trimming his nails, but he has one of the worst dog nails I've seen. Um, it's bad. So we're gonna be fixing that. We're also gonna be cleaning his ears and getting him ready for his new home in Texas. So he's under sedation um, just to keep stress. Um, we just don't wanna stress him out. But if you come over here, you can see this 
this toenail is, so it grows out and it actually twirls all the way around, comes into his, hitting on his pad here and is about to grow into itself. Um, so really thankful this little guy came to us and we're able to help him, but we have to remove all of this and it's hard to say where the quick is. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna take it slowly. So normally we're trimming horses. Today we're gonna trim a dog. So this is, this is just pure neglect. Um, and it would be, it would definitely be causing a lot of discomfort, but we're thankful that he was brought to us. Um, and we can try to get him on the right path. We've got all his other toenails. They were, they were long, but nothing like um, what we have going on in the back. Um, so he should be a lot more comfortable um, once he wakes up. Cleaning out his ears just so he's not having to dig around. Um, we have cap start him. He is getting his flea and tick treatment today too. So we're just going in and cleaning out some of that crud out of his ears just to make the ears feel better without irritating them. So he's not going to be digging at his ears as much hopefully as well too. So no sign of infection with his ears, no yeast, anything like that, but just some good cleaning out of that normal waxy crud that's kind of bit little build up a little bit on him. So. It's kind of one of those, you take a little bit, you go back until you finally reach the point and you're like, nope, I'm at the point. So it would just be way too hard to do this while he was awake. No. Um, he would be traumatized, but you can see where it just like was pushing into his pad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luckily it had not grown into it, into it yet, yeah. but it's getting close. So if you have a black nail dog at home, you can kind of look and see, and you're looking for it to turn pink. You don't want to pink the blood. Black toe nails are the worst to do because it's hard to tell where that quick is versus this nice little pink one where you can see the definitive line pink. Now this one I did not trim really, really short for the fact is this one, the pink came down further. So I went very conservative. I can go back and take a little bit more off this nail this nail I can take just a touch more. So if you have one and you're a little gun shy, if you have black and pink nails both, you can kind of go off of the pink nail. And again, I want to start simple on him and then his new home can follow up because you don't want to traumatize them and get their get into the quick on purpose and then they get sore and then they hate their nails trimmed is be conservative, do a little bit at a time and get them used to it. Uh, of, teaching them and it's not a bad thing to get their nails trimmed. So it's still really big, but um, I mean, I don't want to take it too much because the growth supply is going to enlarge and with the nail the that, longer that it goes. goes yeah. So, um, and as you trim it back, that um, quick will recess a little bit. So it'll be easier once you've trimmed it back to go a little bit further the next time. We chopped a lot off that nail, but that's just the first part of it and it's still really long. So this little guy was definitely suffering for a long time with just, just neglect. As soon as he wakes up from his, um, his sleepiness, I will uh, be actually taking him home with me. Um, we're gonna be filming Horse Rescue Heroes um, in Texas, since I'm going down there for filming and mentoring uh, down there. Uh, he's gonna come with me and then I will meet up with his adoptive home and give him to, to them, so. But he's gotta wake up first. It could take a while. We are down here in Texas and we've uh, taken a bit of a drive but we are here to check out Hooker Ranch Equine Refuge. Uh, they came to the workshop uh, for the Full Circle of Life Mentoring. We're down here to feature their organization. Um, from everything we can see, uh, it's a really good organization. We haven't been there in person yet, obviously, but we are gonna be checking them out and uh, just really looking at the work they're doing. And I really hope that they'll continue to be a Full Circle Life Force Shelter in Texas. having some lunch. They made us some awesome food. And it's warm. And it's very warm. So how's it been going? It's been going good. Sweating like crazy? Yeah, I'll be lighter at the end of this. <laughs> We're going to be drinking a lot of fluid throughout the day. Um, and that horse gorgeous. So awesome, awesome things they're doing here. Here, but it's been really fun uh, day so far. All 
right, it's been really hot here in Texas, but I'm really, really excited about this organization. They do a lot of really great work and um, they're gonna be joining us at boot camp. So super excited. Oh, awesome. awesome. What's boot camp? I look clapped, but I don't have my other hand. So. <laughs> I think they've got such a huge potential. So yeah, we uh, we will be heading back to Tennessee, but um, yeah, very happy we were able to come here, meet with this organization and um, invite them personally to boot camp. We were able to do a lot of great mentoring while we were here and uh, filming to highlight this organization. So yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy some air conditioning. It's been It's been awesome down here. All of our stuff is too hot to work. Like it's literally hot to the touch. And so I'm trying to cool it off in front of the AC. Yeah. So we can video the device. Yeah, we have to video as we're driving away, but it is very, very hot. And uh, hopefully we can revive our A little equipment. squeaky. Down battery. All right, we are pulling off, finally enjoying some air conditioning. Oh. It was so hot, but uh, it's a great organization and we're really excited to be able to mentor them and uh, have them at boot camp. So. I didn't yeah. hear how hot it was. Well, currently it's uh, 97. Uh, yeah, I think it was closer to 120. It, it was hot.